Hello, I'm Andrew Kamei Deitch, and today we're going to be continuing our look at pre-modern Japan. Our topic today is going to be consolidation and kingship, the early Japanese state. Now, you might remember last time we looked a little bit at Kofun. Now, Kofun, literally the term means ancient grave, are mound tombs, and many of these are very large. You also might note that they have a distinctive keyhole shape that may be unique to ancient Japan. Excavated Kofun have revealed treasures like bronze mirrors, swords, and other artifacts. Last time we looked at some of these and what the they can tell us about ancient Japanese civilization. Now, Kofun themselves show a great variety in size. Here, for example, we have a map of Miyazaki Historical Kofun Park in the island of Kyushu. And we see a great collection of Kofun all gathered together in one location. But the size varies dramatically from very small to very large. At the extreme end of the scale, we have Daisen Kofun in Sakai Osaka, the largest of all of the Kofun in Japan. You can see from the houses and the other buildings around it, but it is a very substantial size. How big is this? Well, here we have a picture comparing it to the Great Pyramid of Khufu in Egypt and the tomb of the first emperor, Chen Shirwandi, of ancient China. And we see that although the pyramid is much taller than Daisen Kofun, the Kofun takes up a much larger amount of land. So we're talking about a very substantial sized tomb of the ancient world here. Now, these Kofuns stand out so much that they have characterized the period from which they date. And therefore, we name this period the Kofun period, lasting until 538 of the Common Era. Now, this is a period characterized by several things. One is the emergence of a local religious tradition. Second is the emergence of a royal state. And third, it's a time of significant influence from the continent. And this is something we're going to continue to think about as we move through pre-modern Japanese history, relations between Japan and its neighbors in East Asia. Now, what kind of things can Kofun tell us? Well, the first thing we can think of is when a state emerged in Japan. You might be thinking, what's the connection between a state and a big tomb? Well, here's the thing. You have to have a couple of things if you're going to make a tomb this big. First of all, you have to have the power and the organizational capacity to get together the people to build this thing. And second, you have to have the wealth needed to fund the project. So if you have the ability to get together that many people and the ability to bring together that wealth to make it happen, then those two things can be indicative of the emergence of a state. And from the 4th to 5th century in the Kinai region in central Honshu, we find the development of the Yamato polity, characterized by the establishment of a royal institution headed by a great king. Now, the Chinese character here for king doesn't actually have a gender association. So it could mean a man or it could mean a woman. And indeed, in ancient Japan, we have both male and female rulers. Second thing that Kofun can tell us is about how far this state's political or cultural influence reached geographically. So here we have a map of prominent Kofun locations across Japan. You can see that we have Kofun all across the islands except in the far northeast. This means that either we have a state that has political control over these areas to the extent that it has Kofun there, or if we have a range of different polities that they are at least influenced by that central state enough that they are willing to copy that type of tomb building tradition. Another thing that Kofun can tell us is what society and culture were like at the time. Now, this was a time of a more advanced agricultural society. We see this in the forms of tomb art that we have, the weapons that we find in these tombs, fashion, and also the offering figures, which are called haniwa. 
Another thing that we find is about the gradual development of literacy. The oldest tomb artifacts in Japan either contain no writing, or they use characters merely in totemic ways. So, for example, we have armor that might say power on it, or something like this, as a way of kind of encouraging people in combat, or suggesting that they have protection from the gods. But later on, we find increasingly more complex writing, symbolizing how literacy is becoming more and more advanced in society. We also see the gradual development of new ideas about religion and politics, and these new ideas themselves also influenced the decline of Kofun building. As Kofun became very, very expensive to build, and the royal state changed its form and found different ways to express its power, and at the same time as new ideas about religion made tomb building unpopular and suggested that cremation was a better alternative, this contributed to the decline of the Kofun building tradition. Here we have some examples of Haniwa designs from tombs. These, again, are very well known in contemporary Japanese society, and Haniwa designs often show up in pop culture contexts. There's a lot of things that Haniwa can teach us. So we have human figures, and if we look at them, we can find out things about ancient fashion, the type of clothing or armor people wore, the type of tools or weapons they used, and also we find out about draft animals and other things about their society. One of the most interesting things that we found in Kofun are clues to ancient fashion. Here we have a painting that's inside a Kofun excavated in 1972. And you can see that it clearly shows three high-status women dressed in very nice outfits. It's so detailed and in such excellent condition that it's been possible to reconstruct these, as indeed some people in Japan have done. So here we have modern recreations of this Kofun era clothing. So, in conclusion, if we look at Kofun, we see that they can tell us a great many things about when an early Japanese state developed, and also about what it was like. They clearly show that by the 5th century, Japan was already developing a complex society and culture. What kind of society comes after that is going to be the subject of our next talk. Thank you very much.